would consider this situation outside of the scope of the class. I don't think that this kind of problem should be here, but we chose it, so we have to stick with it. And I'll, I'll explain why I think it's beyond the scope of the course. Because it's a rational function, it doesn't fit any of the um, uh, same degree over same degree, um, higher degree in the denominator, or higher degree in the numerator by one unit. So it doesn't fit any of those categories. It's something completely different, but that's fine. Good. So here we're asked to do the whole thing. Graph, limit, symmetry, everything, everything. So I wanted to show you, because it's easier if I show you with the, with the book. I don't like the way the book presents this. Um, there is, first of all, no table. They're just presenting stuff. There is no summary anywhere. Okay, there is just A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and then sketch. But there is no summary. There is no explanation. There is no uh, putting everything together. There is no such thing. Okay? But this, they say the guidelines, and they give us guidelines from A till H. I don't think that this is yet useful. That's my opinion anyway. Oops. I managed to destroy my setting here. Okay. So we're looking at this function. It's a rational function. I have to start with the domain. Every time I graph, every time I start the table, I have to put the domain up here first. That's my starting point. So, can anyone give us a domain of this function? Anyone, please? Can anyone? X cannot equal 2. That's it. Negative infinity, 0, 2. Infinity. If the function is not defined at 2, its derivatives cannot be defined at 2. Great job. Thank you. Of course, I have to plug in 0. Of course, I have to determine the limit at negative infinity, the limit at positive infinity, and the limits left and right of the vertical asymptote. So let's do that. And then I exhausted the function. First, I have to exhaust the function. x and y intercepts, limits, and limits left and right of the vertical asymptote. Once I exhausted the function, then I go to the first derivative and the second derivative afterwards but not before. Okay, good. So we have to find the limit as x approaches negative infinity uh, from x to the third over x minus two. And remember what we did, because of course it's infinity over infinity. So one option would be to just differentiate because it's L'Hopital's rule. So let's just do that. But that's the easiest thing to do. I was going to factor x, but we have L'Hopital's rule. Why, why bother? Good. So then we have limit as x approaches negative infinity. Can anyone differentiate x cubed? 3x squared. Excellent. Three x squared. Excellent. Can anyone differentiate x minus 2? Number one. Awesome. Can anyone plug in negative infinity and give us the answer? Anyone? Anyone, please? Well, 
when we plug in negative infinity in here, what do we get? Would it be infinity? That's it. Oh, I thought I said, I must have been muted. Sorry. No, no worries. Good. The other side. Nothing will change. I still get 3x squared. I still plug in, but this time infinity. What will be the answer? If we plug in infinity instead of negative infinity, what will be the answer? The same. The same. So I, I need to find the limit as x approaches 2 from the left of x cubed over x minus 2, and the limit as x approaches 2 from the right from x cubed over x minus 2. I'm sneezing, sorry. OK. So let's plug it in. Where is the numerator going? Positive infinity. Careful. We are applying. Sorry, positive. We, it's two. Two from the left. Eight. Very good. Now careful. Two from the left means 1.9. 1. 1. I know it's zero, but I need the sign. Negative. Yes. So then the answer is negative infinity. The numerator is still 8. But now I want 2 from the right, like 2.1. Just a sign. Positive. That's it. So I get positive infinity. It's a vertical asymptote. It's 8 over 0. But I only need the sign of the denominator. Great job. This is done. Don't have anything else to do here. I'm moving on to the first derivative. So let's differentiate x cubed over x minus 2. I'm going to write it here. So let's find f prime. Of course, the denominator is squared. Can anyone differentiate the numerator for us? x squared. Very good. Times the denominator minus the numerator times the denominator prime. You already told me it was 1. So that's it. Please do not distribute. See, these two terms have x squared in common. So 3x minus 6 minus x. So I pulled x squared out, so I have 3x minus 6. I pulled x squared out, so I still have negative x. So finally, I have x squared. And then in parentheses, 2x minus 6 over x minus 2 squared. Or 2x squared x minus 3 over x minus 2 squared. I prepared it for f prime being 0 or undefined. But this is undefined where the function is undefined, so I will not get anything from there. But when we look at this fraction and we set it equal to 0, can anyone tell us what are the x values that make this fraction 0? Zero and negative, uh, zero and three. That's it. Awesome. So I go back to my table. I discovered something very important.
Now I have to study the sign here, here, and here. I have to plug in 3 in the function. 3 to the third is 27. 3 minus 2 is 1. 27 over 1 is 27. Good. So, I look at this function. I refuse to plug in anything in here. Why? Because it's positive, always. And I refuse to plug in anything in here. Why? Because it's always positive. I don't want to waste my time. Only x minus 3 will give us the sign. If I plug in negative 10 in x minus 3, I will get negative. If I plug in 1 in x minus 3, I will get negative. If I plug in 2.5 in x minus 3, I will get negative. If I plug in 10 in x minus 3, I will get positive. So these are the critical numbers. So now I have to make sure that these two rows work well together. If they don't, I'll say, uh oh, and go back to the drawing board. So from infinity to zero, yes, that's true. From zero to negative infinity, yes, it's true. From infinity to 27, yes, that's true. From 27 to infinity, yes, that's true. Zero comma zero is nothing because there is no sign change in the derivative. It's not a max, it's not a min. But 3 comma 27, what type of point is 3 comma 27? Min. Yes. Min. Yes. Relative minimum. Final step, I have to study what the derivative is saying. The second derivative. I already know the sign here. If it has a minimum, it has to look like this. So it has to open up. There is no other way. I will, it will not have a minimum. Here, it's more difficult to figure out what this is. Maybe there is an inflection point. I don't know. So I have to do the work, which is ugly. Very. I will use this form and distribute it because it's easier to differentiate the second time. So the first derivative is 2x to the third minus 6x squared over x minus 2 squared. This is what I want to differentiate. Do I? No, but I have to. So the second derivative. The bottom function has to be squared. And remember, don't forget, factor, after you find this, factor, simplify. Do not distribute in the numerator. If we do, it will take us forever. If we have no choice, then we will do it. But if I can factor and simplify, I will always look for that. Because it's a mess right now. The top prime is 6x squared minus 12x. What times all this? Minus. I copy the top times this prime, a mess. 2 times x minus 2 to 2 minus 1 times the inner function prime likely is 1. So 2x minus 2. If you distribute and not simplify, because you cannot cross like this, you have to factor, right? So we should try to factor and simplify because otherwise it's a mess. It's a mess anyway, to be honest. Okay, 
So definitely I will factor out an x minus 2. Okay, so I'm looking at the first term and I see I see a 6x to be pulled out. So then I have x minus 2, 6x squared. 6x times x is 6x squared, 6x times 2, negative 2 is that. And then, oh, look at that. And that's uh, another x minus 2 squared. Okay, now here I will factor out 2x squared. 2x squared and then times this 2 and then times x minus 6 and times x minus 2 and I always run out of room. And I run out of room, of course. So um, 2x squared, yes. And I have x minus 6 and then 2. And I have to write an x minus 2. Sorry about that. So I will factor out a 2x and an x minus 2. That's what I was saying. This is, we have to see at least one of these problems like that, but it's, um, in my opinion, a little stretching it, but that's okay. So it was a very good play, uh, no question about that. So 2x, so there is a 3. x minus 2 is out, and I have an x minus 2 squared, and I will square it right here x squared minus 4x plus 4 minus uh, 2 and x and an x minus 2. So 2x is out. So I still have a 2x and x minus 2 and x minus 6. So let me make sure that I have so 2, yes, so there is a 3 left and this is correct, minus, correct, 2x is out, so I still have a 2x, this is out, and x minus 6. Awesome. One of these is out, thank goodness, so 2x, and here we have 3x squared minus 12x plus 12 um, minus 2x squared plus 12x over x minus 2 to the third. Wow. Okay, nice. Good. 2x, x squared plus 12. That's what I was expecting. So this is always positive, this piece, but x can be 0. So this will give us possibly the inflection point. I don't know. I have to study the sign. So this is always positive. x can be positive or negative, and also x minus 2 cubed can be positive or negative. So the only piece I'm not going to plug in is that. So negative 10. Negative, negative, but negative with negative is positive. 1, 1, but negative, negative. Okay, and then to the right, uh, to the right of 2, anything I plug in, it will be positive, as expected. This has to happen here. There is no question, because it has a minimum. Here it will open up, and here it will open down. Ah, and I'll write myself a note not symmetric. If I replace x by negative x, I will not get f of x or negative f of x. Not symmetric. Ooh. Okay. 
So now, as you know, as I like to say it to make a point, everything is gibberish. I don't even want to see it, except this. The rest doesn't count. It's not important. Only this is important. First, the um, the points I have. 